Welcome to section two, where we're starting our project. In this section, we're going to take a look at the project overview and scrum board, which is this video. After that, we're going to create a dynamic web project. We're going to look at Maven integration and POM XML. We'll look at a simple user interface and how to deploy our application. Let's start with the project overview and scrum board. So what will our project do? Well, fortunately, I have a look at what it will do. This is the completed application. If I go through and just a moment, I'm going to go back to home and say select attributes. So think of these as features or things that we need to include in our project. First of all, we have a decision. Is it a native plant? Is it a herbaceous plant? Is it evergreen, woody, vine? Uh, what are the different things we can say about our plant? So I'll say native and woody plant. That's one screen. Here's another screen. Every screen is going to have genus, uh, sorry, <laughs> Genus species, Canadensis, cultivar in common, because these are things that we can say about every single plant. But it's this part below that's going to change. Region will only appear if, we'll say Midwest. Region will only appear if native is selected. Height will only appear if a woody plant was selected, as will fall color only appear if a woody plant is selected. So these are things that we need to think about. We hit submit, get a confirmation message, and then we can look at our new plant in our JSON feed over here, our Circus canadensis with fall color of yellow and height of six meters. So that's what our application does. From the user's point of view, step one, select attributes, for attribute groups for a plant. That's our evergreen, native, herbaceous, or whatever else we're going to add to it. Then enter the values that correspond to those attribute groups and then see the plant on JSON output. So let's consider some functions. Select attribute screen, add plant screen, and JSON feed. And let's think of those as functions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to a scrummy board. So scrummy.com and then plant flashcards JSON. And I can add these things as stories. So we'll say select attribute screen. So stories are features, something that a user would understand. And then over on the right side of this, we have a place where we can enter the individual sprint tasks or the technical tasks that are required to accomplish this story. So select attribute screen, add plant screen. That's the screen, or we don't even need to say screen because it's really a feature. Uh, let's just say select attributes, add plant. Okay, generate JSON. Okay, and what else do we have? We also have some non-functional attributes. We have environment setup and timestamp login. We want a timestamp anytime we get a anytime we get a request and a response. So we'll say timestamp login. Okay, and we'll also say environment setup. Okay, naturally environment setup is going to be the first one that we're going to do. We can't get much done until we get the environment set up. So let's start by tasking out some things here. I just press on the little plus and we'll say install prerequisite software. So Java, Eclipse, okay. And then we'll say maybe configure the Eclipse environment. Okay. And we can keep going. We can say start a project and make sure we integrate Maven for builds for our project. And I could be giving these hour estimates down below, but each of these is essentially a video. Some videos will go longer than others, but essentially a video. Okay, so install prerequisite software, configure Eclipse environment, start uh, integrate Maven, and also maybe do some spring integration. I typically don't put technical tasks as stories. Those are usually functional tasks. But in this case, we do need to get an environment set up before we can do anything else. Timestamp logging, okay? Create a log, uh, create a class that can emit logging details. Okay, that one's not too hard, maybe a few lines, okay? Let me go back and say specifically create an interceptor class, okay? Add a register the interceptor with spring, okay? Create methods to log timestamps. Okay, there we go. So a few tasks for that. Now select attributes is our first actual screen. So we'll need to think of create an HTML view. 
uh, to allow the user to select attributes. Okay, gather data from that HTML view in a controller. And there's our first design pattern, model view controller. Actually not our first, because this one up here is our interceptor design pattern. So this is our second. Okay, so create an HTML view, gather data from that HTML view on a controller. Okay, navigate to the next page and indicate which attributes to show. Okay, and save. Okay, add a plant a little bit more here. Create a plant class that will hold data from the HTML form, which means we're going to need, guess what, an HTML form. Create an HTML form to collect, let's say, to accept decorators. That's another one of the design patterns we're going to look at, the decorator design pattern. Okay. Process form data or let's say process general plant form data. Okay, got that. And now we'll say hand off specific plant data to a series of command processors. So that's another design pattern we're going to look at, the command pattern. You see, we can start to think about the technical details when we think about the different patterns that are going to be used. Okay, generate JSON. So generate header json information or let's actually let me change that let's say create a screen create a view that shows only json in other words no html okay generate json for general plant data okay and then create template classes to handle processing specific plant data so template and visitor, I'll say template and visitor classes to handle processing specific plant data. When we get to this step, we'll take a look at the template and visitor design patterns. Several others sprinkled about, including factory method, abstract factory. We also have singleton pattern and also prototype pattern. So several other that we'll take a look at. And I could really keep going with this for a while and add quite a few more technical tasks, but I think we'll find we'll get to a lot of those technical tasks as we go through our video. Because when we're all finished with this video sequence, you're going to see live the application that I've been demonstrating here. There's no magic black box or anything. Everything you see here are things that we're going to do in this uh, video series.